Hello and welcome to my challenge guide for the Broken Home quest. This guide will help you to complete the quest in under the 37 minute requirement whilst helping you to pass the damage areas and avoid death so that you only eat one piece of food and you don't die, which are the three challenge requirements. This guide assumes that you've completed the quest once before and this is the requirement to unlock the challenges. If you haven't completed the quest once yet, I have a guide for completing it for the first time which can be found in the card on screen now and in the description of this video. This guide will use the same footage as the original quest guide as that walkthrough was completed meeting all of the challenge requirements. For this guide I will play through the entire quest, however I've broken down the quest into different stages, timestamps for which can be found in the description. On the left of the screen I will display quick choices for each broken down section so you can simply follow those instructions alongside the walkthrough and commentary, leaving the commentary and walkthrough there in case the quick instructions cause any confusion. If you skip ahead with the quick instructions, simply skip to the next section using the timestamps in the description of the video. With that out of the way, let's get started. For consistency, I will use north, south, east and west to describe the doors and directions to go through. Go up the stairs and enter the mansion. When prompted, choose the first option, yes, to enter the mansion. Once you enter the mansion, you will see a short cutscene of a child walking through a door. After this cutscene, head to the west and go through the southern door on the western wall. You'll be in a safe room now, and to the west you will find a chest. Open up this chest and you will receive some mystery meat. Go through the door to the north. Once you've gone through the door to the north, go through the door on your immediate west. You will see a cutscene of a servant being eaten by a monster, and she will drop two items. Pick up these items, which are going to be the raven key and the clock hands. Once you've got these, go back through the door that you just came through. Then go through the door to the south. You're now back in the safe room. In here, use the clock hands in your inventory on the grandfather clock on the western wall to get an eye gem. Once you have this, run through the eastern door. In the main lobby of the building, run to the eastern wall and enter the door on that wall. You should receive a message stating that you have used the raven key. Go inside this door. When you enter the raven door, you'll see another cutscene. After this cutscene, Open up the southern door. In this room, open the eastern door and you will come across your first puzzle. Click on the pile of books on the floor to begin. This puzzle will require you to stack the books in order. To start with, place the books in any order and see what the messages say. It will tell you which books are out of order and it is up to you to figure out which books go where based on the hints you're given. If you were to get a message saying that the first and second books cause the pile to fall, take them out and place two other books in there, or swap the order of the first book to the second space and the second book to the first space. Essentially, you want to try each book in each space until the hint changes. You don't have to take all of the books out of the pile if it falls, so this should not take too long. Once you've done this, you will receive two eye gems. Once you have the eye gems, enter the door on the western wall. Then enter the door to the north. In here, enter the eastern door at the end of the corridor. Once you've gone through this door, enter the northern door at the end of this corridor. In this room, enter the door in the middle on the south wall, which is the door next to the one that you come through. In here is going to be the second puzzle. You're going to want to click on these statues in the same order that I do. Just move the statues in the direction as I do to complete the puzzle. I'm playing this in 75% speed so you can keep up. If you do make a mistake in the puzzle, you can simply right click one of the statues and choose reset puzzle. At the end of the room is a table with an eye gem on it. Click on this gem at the end of the puzzle to take it. Once you have this gem, return through the door to the north.
Once you've left this room, climb up the stairs to the west. At the top of these stairs, enter the easternmost door. In this room, you will see another cutscene. After this cutscene, enter the eastern door, which is the one the children went through. Once you're through to this next room, open the southernmost door on the western wall. You'll see some notes on the floor. Click on the notes named Ingram's Research Notes and read through them to receive a spider key and a scroll fragment. Once you've got these, return through the door that you came through. Now go through the northern door on the west wall. In this room, enter the western door. Once you've entered this room, open the southern door, and you should get a message stating that you have unbolted the door. Make sure you go through this door. Once you've entered the bolted door room, open the door on the west wall, which is across the balcony. You should receive a message stating that you've used the spider key. Enter this room. In this room, enter the southern door. As well, if you happen to bump into the ghost, just make sure you peek through the door if you see the smoke. And if you have already gone through the door, just click back through the door and he will disappear. Once you've gone through the door to the south, you'll want to click on the dead servant and choose the first option to receive an eye gem. Once you have the gem, open the door on the western wall. There's going to be a large curtain in here. Click on it to draw it back and you'll see a faceless servant. Click on her to search her and choose the first option to receive the statue key. Once you've got this key, go back through the door you came through. In the dead servant room, open the door to the north. Once in this room, go through the door to the north. You'll then want to go through the door to the east at the end of this corridor. In this room, enter the westernmost door on the south wall and you'll receive a message stating that you've used the statue key. Make sure you go through this door. In this room, there'll be a large statue with an eye gem on the floor next to it. Click on the gem to pick it up and you should now have six eye gems in your inventory. Investigate the large statue twice to add two gems to it, then enter the door to the west. Do the same in this room and then enter the door to the south. Do the same in this room and then enter the door to the east. Once you've gone through the door to the east, you will find the scythe key on the floor. Pick it up. Once you have the key, you'll want to exit the statue rooms by going through the west door, then the north door, then the east door, and then through the northern door. Now that you've done this, open the door to the west. You'll then want to go through the door to the south at the end of this corridor. Next, open the easternmost door at the end of this corridor. And finally, open the eastern door at the end of this balcony. You should receive a message stating that you have used the scythe key. Make sure you go through this door. In this room, open the southeasternmost door, which is going to be your second safe room. Investigate the shrine in here and you'll receive a grand piano key and a skull key. There's also a chest in here with some mystery meat in it if you feel you're going to need some more. Once you've got this, go through the door to the north, which you just came through. Next, go to the western door, right click on it and choose peak. You'll peer through this door and you will see that there is a dead body in front of it with some legs there. Once you see this, choose go back. Once you've done this, open the north wall's easternmost door and you'll receive a message stating that you've unbolted the door. Make sure you go through this. Then go through the northernmost door on the west wall. 
In this next room, go to the end of the corridor through the door to the west. There'll be some stairs in here, you'll want to click on those to go down them. In this next room, open the southern wall's most eastern door, which is the one at the end of the corridor. Now next up, you're going to want to open up this west door. However, what we're going up against now is the first instance of a purple room. Purple rooms deal damage to you as you stay in them. There is nothing we can do to avoid this damage, and so we must just take it. We're going to be getting through these rooms as quickly as possible, and eventually in this quest I will show you when to eat your mystery meat. If you are getting low on health, please feel free to use mystery meat, but be aware that eating mystery meat is going to heal you to full health, so it's worth waiting until you are on very low health before eating it. Once the windows have smashed, go through the western wall's door. You'll be out of the purple room, but we're going back into it. Open the door to the west at the end of this corridor, and you'll be back into the main lobby of the mansion, which is now a purple room which is dealing damage. Run all the way to the west and go through the western wall's southern door, which is going to take us back into the first safe room. Once we're in here, go through the door to the north. In this next corridor, go through the northern door, which is in the center of this corridor, and you'll get a message stating that you've used the skull key. Make sure you go through here. Once through here, go through the eastern wall's southern door right next to you, and then click on Omrod Scribblings on the floor. Read them and close it to obtain a scroll fragment, then go back through the door that you came through. Once back in here, open the door to the north. Then go through the western door right next to you. There's going to be a piano in here. Click on it to play it and then go through the southern door which is hidden, but you can just see an outline of it. This is going to be a purple room where you need to click on a skeleton in the opposite corner to where you are. You want to hold down the space bar because you need to go through a dialogue to obtain a gem from this skeleton and the damage will interrupt that. So click on the skeleton with the space bar held so the dialogue skips and you should obtain the gem. Then get out of the room as quickly as possible. Once you've got the gem and you've left the purple room, go through the eastern door to leave the piano room and then go through the southeasternmost door in this corridor. There'll be some stairs here, you'll want to click on those to go down them. Now there's going to be a safe room here, it's the westernmost door on the north wall, click on this to go through, there is also a chest in here which has some mystery meat in it, so click on that to get that mystery meat, and then leave this door to the south. You'll now want to open the west wall's northernmost door right next to you, and then search the butler in here to get yourself a cleaver key, then leave through the door that you came through to the east. Open the north wall's easternmost door, which is next to the safe room, and you'll get a message saying you've used the cleaver key. Go through this door. Make sure you turn off your run in here by clicking on the icon at the top right of the minimap. That is because walking on these shards of glass is going to damage you if you're running, but if you walk, you will not take damage. As you can see here, I had a bit of a hard time with that and took a lot of damage. There's blocks with knives shooting out of them, but these aren't too hard to dodge. Just time it right, get through, and go through the door at the end of this maze. In this next room, go through the north wall's middle door. In here you'll find a chest of drawers, you'll want to search this to get yourself a large pipette. Open the door to the south that you just came through. Now open the northern wall's easternmost door. You'll see a pig in here, you'll want to use the large pipette on the pig and go through the dialogue to get some pig bile. Now go through the door to the south that you just came through. Back in this room, open the eastern door. And in here, you're going to find a furnace. Click on this to search it and go through the dialogue to get yourself some human ashes. And then go back through the door you just came through to the west. Run to the southwestern corner where there's a cauldron and use the pipette on the cauldron and then the human ashes on the cauldron. And then use the pipette on the cauldron again. The pipette should now be called an alkaline concoction. Use this on the door to the south and then go through this door to the south. Open the door to the west. 
You'll get a message and you'll want to choose the first option to go through. You'll find a frozen servant. Click on the frozen servant and choose the first option. And then when prompted again, choose the first option again and you will receive a doll key. Once you've got this key, open up the door to the east. Don't do what I'm about to do. Just wait by the door you've come out of. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm simply just showing where one of the temporal chests is. But if this is your first time going through this quest, you will not be able to open that chest anyway. So it's pointless going to it. So ignoring what I've just done, you'll want to go through the north eastern door. In here, there is a key hook next to the ladder. Click on it to take the snake key and then click on the ladder and choose the first option to climb up it. You'll be in the purple room again and will take some damage. Click on the stairs in the centre of the lobby area to climb up them and then run over to the western wall and click on it to go through it. Once you're through here, you're going to want to go through the westernmost door at the end of the corridor and you will get a prompt stating that you've used the doll key. Make sure you go through this door. In this room, you'll see some stairs. Click on them to climb up them. You'll see a tusks key on the floor. Click on this to pick it up. Now go back down the stairs. Open the eastern door which you came through earlier and then you're going to want to go through the door on the north wall right next to you here. In this next corridor, run to the end of it and go through the door on the east. In this room, open the easternmost door on the south wall and you'll get a message stating that you've used the tusks key. Go through this door. There's going to be a bust in here, you're going to want to click on it to investigate it, and a statue is going to move. Once that's happened, click on the trapdoor where the statue has moved to go down it. In here there's going to be a thief. Click on the thief and go through the dialogue to get an eye gem and then climb back up the ladder. Once back in the bust room, go back through the door to the north. Now open the south wall's western door, which is just next to the one that you've come out of. In this room, you're going to want to go through the following doors. The west door, then the south door, and then the eastern door. Now that you've got two eye gems, you can investigate this final statue twice to add both of the eye gems to it. There will be a secret door to the east that you can see, click on it to open it. This is going to be a safe room in here and so that's going to be some more safe progress. Click on the shrine to take the mother's hairbrush after going through the dialogue. Then open the door to the west that you just came through. Now open the western door. The northern door. The east door. and the north door. You'll now be out of the statue rooms, go through the door to the west. Now go through the door at the south. And once in this room, go through the door to the west. Now you're going to want to prepare because there is going to be a monster chasing you in a minute, although I will prepare you for it. You want to click on these stairs and then once you climb them, talk to the spirit. At the end of the dialogue, you'll get a noose key, but a monster is going to start chasing you. I'd recommend pausing your gameplay here and not continuing the dialogue and just watch what I do so that you've got an idea of where we're going to be going. After the dialogue, you'll see this part of the cutscene. And then at the end of the cutscene, you will be down the stairs, not in this room, but in the room just before this one. You'll want to open the east door once you've got that key. And then you're going to want to run down the corridor and open the eastern door again. Once you're through here, you're going to be in the purple room taking damage. You'll want to go through the door to the north, which is on the eastern side balcony to the north. Here I made a mistake and was clicking on the wrong door. Do not do this. You'll want to click on the door to the north. You'll get a message stating that you've unbolted the door and then you'll want to go through it. Immediately in this room, go to the eastern door. 
and then in this room you'll want to very quickly click on the southern door. You'll want to do this twice, the first time we'll use the noose key and the second time we'll take you through. Even if the monster is on you like that, you still have time to go through. Once you've gone through that door, click on the cupboard to go inside it. Now that you're in the basement, the monster has stopped chasing you. Now that we're in the corridor, run along it and make sure you're facing north so that you can see a little gap in the wall. You'll want to click on here to peek through the peephole. Once you've peeped through the peephole, you can click go back. Now you'll want to run all the way to the west and click on the door. You'll get a message saying that you've unbolted it and then you'll want to go through it. You'll then want to go through the south wall's eastern door to find the level 30 temporal chest. Once you've opened this, go back through the west door. Once through here, open the east wall's northernmost door. There is going to be a safe room in here, which is one that we've been in before, but if you want to save your progress, go through the north wall's western door, and then just click back on the door that you've come through to save your progress. There's going to be some stairs behind these stairs you can climb up in here. You'll want to go down the stairs. Once down the stairs, open the door on the eastern wall. In this room, you'll want to descend the stairs. Now there's going to be a puzzle here. You'll want to move the three most southern statues onto the pressure plates, leaving the northernmost statue where it is. Once you've done the first three of them, you'll want to stand on the pressure plate in front of the door in order to open the door. Once you've done this, walk through and climb down the stairs. In this room, get to the end of the corridor and climb down the stairs again. There's also a temporal chest there which requires level 50 in all skills, which on your first run through you cannot open. You'll be in another similar looking corridor, climb down the stairs again. In this room you'll see some mountaineering gear, you'll want to click on this to descend it, and when prompted choose the first option to go down. You're now in another safe room, there is a chest to the north here which has some more mystery meat in it. Run through the door to the east. In this room you will see a reception desk, you'll want to click on it to search it and receive Nabor's notes and the chains key. Once you've got these, go through the door to the north. Next, go through the door to the east. You'll now want to go through the easternmost door at the end of the corridor and you'll get a prompt stating that you've used the chains key. Once you've got this prompt, click on the door again to go through it. In this room, you'll want to go south and go through the east wall's door. In this next room, go through the door to the east again. You'll now want to enter the cell to the south of you, and you'll find a dagger key in it. Pick that up. Once you've got the dagger key, you can go back through the door that you just came through, which is now to the west. Go through the western door again. Go north in this corridor, and then through the door on the west wall. Go to the end of this corridor and go through the west door. Now that you're in this room, you'll want to go through the southern door. And now you'll want to go through the door to the west that you originally came through to get into this cell area. You're now back in the safe room and your progress will be saved again. Climb up the rope that you climbed down earlier. You'll now want to run to the west and climb up the stairs. Go around this corridor and climb up the stairs again. Once again, go to the end of the corridor and climb up the stairs. 
Once you're in this room, go through the puzzle door and climb up the stairs to the southwest. Once you've climbed up these, go through the door to the west. In this room, climb up the stairs to the north. And then climb up the staircase in this room. Now, I would recommend pausing from here because you are going to be chased by the monster again, just so you've got a better idea of where you're going. You'll want to go through the northern door, and once you go through here, you'll start getting chased. Go through the south wall's western door. Once you've gone through here, you'll want to click south and go through the southern door. You'll now want to go through the southern door, which is to the west. In this room, go through the eastern door and you'll be in the purple room, which is going to deal damage to you. You'll want to climb up the stairs in the centre of the lobby. And once you get to the top of the stairs, you'll want to click on the servant to the east in front of the door to move the servant out of the way of the door. Once you've done this, go through that eastern door. Now, you'll want to go through the southern wall's western door, which is right next to you, and click on it twice to get through. Once in here, search the floor for Ingram's rantings for the last scroll fragment. The monster can't get you in here, so you are okay. Click on these fragments to combine them in your inventory, as you should have three now. Once you've done this, go through the northern door and then run immediately to the east. The monster is going to appear and what you'll want to do is click on the scroll in your inventory and then click on the monster. And now the monster is no longer dangerous. You can now speak to the monster and you're going to want to go through the dialogues. You can choose any of the dialogue options that you want here as it really doesn't impact anything other than the way that you deal with Ormod. You can either choose to have him be devoured by this demon or you can allow him to be set free. From here you can go through the door to the southwest underneath the monster. What I do here is I go through the door to the north just to show you the monster disappearing so you can see the door to go through. You don't have to do this, you can just click on the western door behind the monster. However, just to make this a little bit easier for people, I clicked on the northern door, went right back through it immediately, and as you can see the demon is gone. I then went through the southwestern door that we were just in. I then go through the east door, and in here you will find the level 90 temporal chest. Once you've got that, go back through the west door, and then go back through the northern door. Once you've gone through the door to the north, go through the door to the west. Once you've gone through this door, you'll be in the lobby area, but you will not take any damage. Click on the stairs in the centre of the balcony area to descend them, and then speak with the ghost in the middle of the lobby. You'll want to go through this dialogue, and at the end of it you will see a cutscene where Ormod is either devoured or set free. Once you've done this, complete the dialogue, and you'll want to leave the mansion through the door to the south. You may get a message saying that you will lose unsaved progress, just ignore this and choose the first option to go through the door. Once you're outside the mansion, go down the steps and speak with Maria. When prompted, choose the first option, I'd like to claim a reward, and complete the dialogue to get your rewards. I hope this guide has helped you to complete this quest in under 37 minutes without dying and while only using one food. This was a particularly hard guide to make and took a lot of consideration regarding how to present the information well, but in a time sensitive manner, and I would really appreciate any feedback you may have. If this video helped, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel so you don't miss any other videos. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.